Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So um, let's start with a thought of uh, Albert San Giorgi. Discovery is seeing what everybody else has seen, but thinking what nobody else has thought. However, we're here in the room that uh, where we, many of us, have thought differently. And the uh, first slide over here is to just uh, put a, a remark into we, we don't, uh, we're not just looking to, to have a response. We're looking for improving survival, quality of life. And the reason I, I put these slides is because uh, the regular chemotherapy has great response, but oftentimes doesn't have that great of a survival. Uh, we, we ought to look at the uh, environment uh, in order to, to make sure that we attack the problem properly. Now, we're not going to talk about all these mechanisms, but this is a list of, uh, of different mechanisms by which uh, uh, vitamin C uh, will help the body to fight cancer. Now, the reason I put this is because uh, in, in everybody that, uh, when dealing with cancer, uh, some of the mechanism will be more important than others. So that, that will mean that the concentration of vitamin C that we need might not be the same, even for the person that has the same cancer, because the cause and the conditions, the specific condition, will not be the same. Therefore, we, we will all agree, at, I believe, at some point, that we have to give a substantial amount of intravenous vitamin C. But at, at the end, we'll see that taking this into consideration, uh, we'll have to um, look into individual aspects in order to, to finally decide what's the best strategy. Um, so we, 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 we can see that, uh, can, we, or we know that cancer patients are usually tired, have uh, bruised easily, have low appetite, and vitamin C can help in many of these uh, symptoms. Uh, people uh, with cancer often are uh, uh, deficient of uh, vitamin C, so we, we're looking not just to replace that uh, vitamin C, but also to, to give him enough to fight the disease. And uh, with that, we also get an, a better um, tolerability of, of chemotherapy and radiation. We, many of us have seen that. And we, in other presentations, we cover that, uh, the fact that using intravenous vitamin C and other forms of vitamin C uh, can help not just to um, ameliorate or uh, decrease the symptoms of toxicity of, of uh, chemotherapy, but also uh, improve uh, response rate. Uh, m many of these points are, are, have already been talked on some uh, going over it fast. Uh, so um, let's find a better way, as Alva Edison says. Uh, this, uh, there are six uh, protocols that uh, have been published that um, we're going to look at quickly. Uh, Pauline Cameron, Murata, the Korean group, uh, uh, Clinical uh, Centers of America, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, and the Riordan. Uh, the Riordan protocol <coughs> goes uh, mostly from 15 to 100 grams, two to three uh, times a week in lactated ringers, and uh, and then an oral dose, uh, the days of vitamin intravenous vitamin C. The um, adaptations uh, go from uh, 50 to 75, uh, three times a week. Uh, Dr. Um, Hickey, uh, Steve Hickey, proposes that we, we can use the model of dynamic flow to augment <coughs> the, the concentration of vitamin C using oral doses. Uh, but but uh, the, we, we brought a concept in one of the um, uh, publications that we have that uh, even though uh, 
high doses of vitamin C will be toxic to, uh, to cancer cells, and uh, could be uh, toxic to cancer cells, and not being toxic to normal cells. There's all, always the possibility that you reach a point that you're giving too much and therefore creating metabolic problems uh, for the patients. And that's why we talk about systemic saturation. You don't want to go over that. <clears throat> Um, now, there's, there's another thing. Uh, uh, Michael, you step in whenever you want. I just wanted to add uh, a couple of things. Let me go back a little bit. I'm going front. Let me see. Here it goes. Okay, in terms of our, uh, we have this adaptation of the Riordan protocol, uh, 50 and 75 grams. It's that, it's that uh, dosing that we have had our best success with the patients. Uh, this doesn't say that we have to really be locked between 50 and 75, there have been good responses like uh, Dr. Rear was presenting in 150 and 100. The thing is that it's gonna vary from patient to patient and, and, so, and, and we're still trying to figure out why. And, and there's many issues, the amount of toxicity in that patient, uh, different uh, lifestyles, uh, and there's different things that we still have to look at that we haven't been able to identify. But at least in, in terms of, in our experience, between 50 and 75 has been pretty successful. Let, let me say something. Sure. I was going to uh, go yeah. into that also, uh, maybe in the later s slides, but I'll, I'll go now. Uh, and, and that is, when, when you have a more fragile person that has a, a, a larger bulk of, of tumor, you want to be more careful because those people may respond too quickly, too, 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 too much, and, and, you, and that could be harmful. So therefore, in those people, you start lower and you go up slower as opposed to people that, that are stronger and have a smaller amount of tumor. But, but this is something that is really difficult to predict completely because you will have some cell lines that will not be that responsive to, to vitamin C, but you still have to to anticipate that it's gonna be sensitive and go slowly to protect the patient. The other thing is that we have identified at the center, uh, Dr. Kashari identified uh, different substances that may be able to enhance the activity of vitamin C. And one example of this is alpha lipoic acid. It enhances the, the cell killing effect of, of ascorbic acid. And there's the study in the British Journal of Cancer done here at the center by Dr. Kashari. And uh, it, it really enhanced the, act, the eff effectiveness of as, uh, vitamin C, IV vitamin C. See, there, there you, you have particular um, uh, concentrations in which you can actually see how increasing the, the concentrations uh, substantially will increase the, the activity. This is uh, an important issue that I wanted to bring you. Uh, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America have been doing a pretty large study. Uh, this is the first phase. Uh, I think they are looking into the second phase right now. And uh, they, were, they have been using continuous doses in, in the form of dose escalations of ascorbic acid. And they have been using a continuous uh, type of, 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 of treatment, of therapy. Yeah. I'm going to ask a question. Does anybody know about this study? Is, is, is it so ongoing? Not so far. No. So, so they stopped? It's a different study going, but not the same. Okay. Because yeah. well, I never s saw the results published. Well, the thing is that the early, the, at least the preliminary results were not too encouraging. And... Uh, we think that the idea of this continuous high dose escalation is not a good idea, and we're going to explain you why. The issue here that we have kind of identified, it, we call it systemic saturation. And it's when the concentration of ascorbic acid and plasma and tissue uh, b are so high that disturb different biochemical parameters that are not uh, in, in a positive manner uh, to attend cancer. And, and this issue is basically that uh, you have this ascorbic acid conversion to dehydroascorbic acid, and, and what could happen is that it's reversed back to ascorbic acid. So when you have this conversion, you have this ac uh, peroxidant action. When you have this reverse back, you may have an antioxidant action again. So all that peroxidant action that you want to have available to kill or to, to for an anti-carcinogenic uh, effect or carcinostatic effect, 
you won't be able to have it if you reconvert it to ascorbic acid, and then you have an uh, antioxidant action again. <coughs> so uh, we have seen that when you overpass, uh, it, it's more common when you pass 100 milligrams or more, given in a continuous schedule. And we have seen that multiple intermittent, short-term intravenous infusions of ascorbic acid for a longer time will correlate with better anti-tumor effects than do single continuous uh, very high IV doses. Uh, nevertheless, I should mention that this uh, is not the case with viral infections and bacterial infections, when, when this issue is not as, as, as major as in cancer. Okay. There's many issues that uh, uh, Dr. Levy brought that are very important, and in terms of uh, duration, uh, how long we're going to give this. Uh, the, the experience of the center is that at least you have to give it between six months and a year. And uh, sometimes, uh, as you say, one of the things that we can kind of guarantee is a better quality of life. We, uh, survival time, tumor response, uh, Metastasis inhibition cannot be guaranteed, right? Now, the thing is, uh, obviously, how long are you going to give it? That, that's going to depend on, on many factors. If you identify particular factors that were risk, that were corrected, then, then you would think the risk of recurrence is less than people who you cannot, you've done all the changes, but you, there were not, you could not identify something that, that, um, that, could be corrected, so in those people you have to be more careful. Dr. Levy mentioned something very important about toxicity. It seems that uh, if the patient has a, a, a great quantity of toxicity in his body, it's going to take longer. It may take higher doses also. Now, now uh, be, before this, uh, him putting uh, um, tumor marker response and, and tumor growth response, uh, and all, I believe I put um, other markers like uh, later on, and that's because uh, you, you want to look at the whole picture. He, here are the various concentrations that, that, uh, that you get either with nutritional supplementation, oral supplementation, or intravenous. And then next one, uh, okay, this already showed. Uh, you, here, here we're saying that if you, you can start with a low uh, millimolar concentration and go up and, and you go uh, more aggressive with the people who are stronger and need it the most and, and, and you look into the tumor markers or, and other surrogate uh, markers like uh, CRPs. See, this is a way of kind of calculating the, what, what, what's the dose you're going to use. What, what response are you getting? Are you getting uh, lower tumor markers? Are you getting lower uh, inflammation markers? And uh, how's the quality of life? Those are kind of, uh, of, of things that you could have in mind in order to calculate the dose for a specific patient. Because the, the, the point is different tumors are going to have different sensitivities. So, so fixing to a particular concentration is, is not uh, going to be worth for everybody the same. Another issue that I wanted to talk about a little bit is this, this action that sometimes we've seen in certain doses, uh, instead of an anti-carcinogenic effect, we've seen a carcinostatic effect. We see that the tumor stays there, but it doesn't grow anymore. And, and sometimes the person may be able to live 25, 30 years with the, that tumor there if it's not growing, if it's not bothering and doing other, other stuff. But the thing is, is it, should we increase the dose to have an anti-carcinogenic effect, uh, or we should just be happy with that carcinostatic effect. We don't know the answer to that. But we are guessing that if, if you look into these markers, that <coughs> might give you an idea if that's the, the specific dose that the patient will respond. What, what is though important is that uh, we, we're looking into the dose, but remember there are other things that we would need to, to put into the patient's protocol. We mentioned alpha lipoic, here we're mentioning oxygen that uh, we believe that as, as we do more research, we will be able to document that the response to, to the vitamin C for the tumors are going to be more reliable. The other thing is that uh, we, we combine with oxygen. I think it's a good idea to combine with oxygen. Uh, Dr. Levy mentioned about the insulin potentiation. 
there are other nutraceuticals that may even help, like, as for example, as folipoic acid. They may be mitochondrial enhancers like coenzyme Q10 that may also uh, help. And uh, so there are many things that we still have to look at to potentiate this action, this action that already has demonstrated intravenous vitamin C. So That's the that saying of Dr. Hugh. Uh, people, people who say it cannot be done should not interpret those who are doing it. <laughs> these, these people here are people that have been doing that. There's Dr. Clanner, uh, Dr. Pauling, Huff. Uh, Klanner, uh, Cathcart, and there's Dr. Hugh with the original RECNAC uh, 2 group. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.